please maintain the temple in prayer. For we have found a place, a place of refreshing in the spirit. Maintain the temple. We found that place. We found that place. We found that place. Mila hateli mo sante. Mosqueto pre lo hombeli mantaya. Yama ala ore nasila endomo. Resco falis kete mohonde babaria. Yamo teli manzeli. Ruka baba sento ramaya. Iale mo koria biskante le ruma kande boske tamina kadia ratabonde eskito prelo kabelaito. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the refreshing that is in your presence. Thank you for the grace that you bestow upon us when we draw nearer. Thank you for the blessing of turning our hearts into words and adorning you for the privilege, for the honor. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we are going to sit and take a shot from the Word of God for 30 minutes. You may be seated. Turn your Bible to the book of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, and we are considering the theme of the conference, Kingdom Tools. Luke chapter 4. From verse 31, the Bible reads, And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? And I come to destroy us, I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. Verse 36 is my emphasis for this lecture. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. So in this scripture, this is an observation. This is a reaction that is coming from the congregation in the synagogue where Jesus taught. What a word is this? Or in essence, what a message is this? And if someone is making such a remark about a message, you will expect that maybe they would have added the title of the message or some PowerPoint in the message. That was the point of attraction and the point of connection. But that was not the case in this scripture. What a message is this? Then we're waiting to hear the message. This was the reason for the amazement was that the message that Jesus preached was accompanied with the validity and the potency of kingdom tools. And the two tools at Jesus' disposal 
with which he prosecuted ministry was power and authority. Are you still with me? Just a 30 minutes um, short from the word of God. So we are going to do an analysis for which I might invite you to draw a table like this in your jota. And then you put one column. First column will be power. Second column will be authority. So that we can analyze these kingdom tools. The kingdom tools are begging for an analysis. And that's what we're going to do here in keeping with the theme of the conference. All right. The first column, I told you to label it power. And the second column, label it authority. But before we go into that list, that table, I will still draw your attention to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. So that we can put some things in perspective. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. This is Apostle Paul speaking, and he says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. You know, when I went for youth service, I was a classroom teacher, and I taught physics, I taught chemistry, I taught mathematics, I taught further mathematics. And if you are teaching in the sciences and trying to pass knowledge, there are several concepts that you cannot convey effectively until you take advantage of the aid of a diagram. So those concepts can be illustrated. If it is chemistry, you illustrate some concepts in organic chemistry using structures. If it is biology, you will need some diagrams to illustrate the concepts. Now, Apostle Paul is saying, for the kingdom of God is not in word. So word is, mere words are weak as a true avenue of illustration. The avenue that can illustrate kingdom things is called power. So if there is no power, it is impossible to illustrate kingdom things so what are you are you with me so the observation of the congregation concerning the service delivery that jesus brought was that with authority and with power he commanded the unclean spirits and they obey him you will see that jesus's ministry was highly illustrated by the utensil of power and authority that accompanied his ministry in jesus's ministry it was easy to see the inferiority of the kingdom of darkness over the kingdom of light because jesus had utensils that could illustrate the supremacy of the kingdom of god over the kingdom of darkness and if there is anything that the kingdom of darkness would like to hide is the fact that it is an inferior kingdom and it is only when the kingdom tools and the utensils of the kingdom are deployed adequately that the defeat of the devil is illustrated for men to see i said you should draw a chart draw a chart and then we'll put number one in that your chart number one on that power the scripture reference for that is Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Power, number one, is gift-based. Power is gift-based. And the reference for that is Luke chapter 1, verse 19. And the Bible says, Behold, I give unto you power, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. In the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, and ye shall receive power, is gift base. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So power is gift-based. 
Well, one thing I need to draw your attention to in this scripture is that Jesus did not say you will receive the ability to speak in tongues after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. But Jesus said you will receive power. But in this hall today, we have the average believer sitting in this hall has the ability to speak in tongues as an initial evidence that he is filled with the Holy Ghost. But when we talk about power, you might not find it equally applicable in the life of every believer here. And the reason is because we have not yet initiated the conversion, the conversion principle. And I want to leave that. Um, let's go the other way. Authority. You know, we said power is gift-based. But authority is not gift-based. Authority is relationship-based. So it is possible for you to have power and you do not have authority. It is possible for you to be possessed with the utensil of power and because of a lack of intimacy with God, your life does not command commensurate authority. Mark chapter 3 verse 14. Quickly. I'll try to do... To summarize as much as possible. Mark chapter 3 verse 14. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him that he might send them to preach. If you look at this scripture, you'll find out that the reason for which he ordained them was not to preach. The reason for which he ordained them was that they should be with him. And then, having been with him, if he has an errand for them to run, he now passes delegated authority to them to represent him so they now have authority because having been with him, he felt there were errands that he wanted them to run. And that was the reason why he bequitted to them authority so that they will have adequate capacity to represent him. But you see, the original reason for which he ordained the 12 is so that they can what? Be with him. Now, how many of you have ever visited a restaurant before? Restaurant. When you go, when you come into a restaurant, you'll find a functionary there called a waiter. The reason for which the waiter is paid is paid to wait. So whether or not you come to the restaurant to look upon their menu, the waiter will be paid for waiting. That's what he's paid for, and that's why he's called a waiter. That's what he does. But when you come and you need service, the waiter is deployed to attend to you and to bring your order. But the original reason for which the waiter was there was still existent before you came. He was still doing his job before you showed up. And that's why he's called the waiter. So everyone that decides to wait on Jesus. Everyone that decides to be around Jesus. Everyone that decides to be present with Jesus gets this privilege again and again to be sent to represent him. And the reason why they can be sent to represent him in the first place is because they share this rare privilege of being around him. It is when Jesus now begins to commission you to represent him that he gives you authority. So if you see a man that has genuine authority, he has something with Jesus. And that was what Peter was speaking about at the gate called Beautiful. When he looked upon the guy that was crippled and impotent in his feet and said unto him, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have... I give you. Now, so he was saying, I don't have money. I don't have Naira. I don't have Kobo. But I'm not empty. 
There is something that I have with Jesus. There is something, a currency that my intimacy with Jesus has created, has produced, and I can spend from that currency even though I do not have silver and gold to put on the table. And you could see him exercise his authority in saying that the man should rise up and walk. And that was an indication of the fact that he had something with Jesus. You see, are you still with me? So power is gift-based, but authority is relationship-based. If we see you wielding authority, we know that you have been with Jesus. Whereas, much younger preachers like power. And I will tell you why. But the fact that you have power is not an evidence that you have met Jesus. In fact, Satan. Satan was cast out of heaven. And God did not even care to withdraw his power from him. And so Jesus still acknowledges in the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 19. He said, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon snakes and scorpions. And over what? All the power of the enemy. God did not bother to retrieve the power that Satan had when he fell. And the Bible acknowledges that Satan has power. Are you still with me? So you, the fact that you have power is not a sign that you know Jesus. It's not a sign that you are intimate with Jesus. But authority is different. If you have authority, it cannot come from any other source apart from the one unto whom you have made acquaintance. Are you still with me? Okay, number two, power is noisy, is boisterous. Power is a marketing tool, is a means of gaining attention. For instance, if we go to a village, anywhere the village may be, and we need some attention because we need to preach the gospel, so we need to generate attention. That's what we did in Brazil, in, in Sao Paulo, me and my friend. I said, okay, I don't understand Portuguese. He said, he knows Portuguese. I said, all right. And we're in the middle of the market. Then I stopped one man and I told him about his problems. And the guy interpreted and then I told him about another problem. This guy interpreted. And before we knew it, he was willing to give his life to Christ. We went to the shop where they were selling were people. We just point somebody, I will tell you about your problem. Then this guy will interpret. And before you knew it, we got the attention of the market in Sao Paulo in, in Brazil. And one of the guys that gave his life to Christ, his idol was upstairs. So when we led him to Christ, he couldn't go back into the shop. He says, idol will punish him. I said, oh, okay. Where is your idol? I said, can you allow us to go there and show you that your idol is nothing? He said, the idol? I said, oh. hallelujah. We'll give you, we won't preach to you. We won't say, talk about Jesus first. We'll just tell you something about your life. If you are still arguing, we'll give you another one. Give you the third one. Give you the fourth one. Then when you now say, okay, yes, something is speaking to you, then that thing that is speaking to me is called Jesus. You know, begin to talk about Jesus. And then the discussion prospered. It prospered in that market, and we created pandemonium in the market. There was no banner. There was no um, handbill. But uh, we, we were able to attract the attention of the people. So it's a marketing tool. Power is noisy. Power is boisterous. And that's the example of what you have in the book of Acts chapter 5, verse Acts chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. Please, if you have that scripture, let me have it on the screen. Acts 8, 5 and 6. I know, I know that um, we like order. King Scott is a very orderly church. Uh, this is my second visit, and it's Yes, it's, it's high on excellence, high on service delivery. But you see, um, sometimes we might need to punctuate the order in order to allow power have its course. 
Because when power comes into the crucible, uh, it, it has a way of disorienting the decorum, disorienting the delicate balance of excellence. Uh, power has that nature. And because it has that quality, so many people that are high on order, they cast it out of the scene. In the book of Acts chapter 8, verse 5, the Bible says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Why? Because they were hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. So the ministry of Philip had audio and he had video. There were things to hear. There were things to see. That's the kind of thing that happens when power touches down. Hallelujah. It's boy, it's boy stereos. Even, the, even someone that doesn't, is claiming not to be interested in the thing, <laughs> is because power has not come. When power hits down, the attention of everyone will be gotten. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that the ministry of Philip was characterized by things that were available for hearing and seeing which were all occasioned by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Seal under number two, under the authority section, whereas power is boisterous and power is noisy, authority is judicial in nature. Luke chapter 13, verse 11 to 16. I think after this, I will rest my case. Hallelujah. We have... Oh, that's my time. Hmm. I have 23 minutes. Okay, that's, that's, a, that's a good development. And behold, there was a woman which had the spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, Thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to walk. In, in them, therefore, come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The response of Jesus was his defense. And the meat of what I want to communicate on this emphasis is drawn from the defense that Jesus made available when he was questioned why he healed on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, please stay with me. Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? The reason why there was no response was because there was no response when he asked this question. Then he went further because they didn't even know where he was going. But you see, in the culture, there was nothing wrong if you took your ox from the stall on a Sabbath day and lead them to watering in the culture. So in the practice and administration of the Sabbath, that was not breaking the Sabbath. So, Jesus now says, are you not allowed to take your ox for watering on the Sabbath day? Nobody answered. Then he said, and ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years be loose from this bound on the Sabbath day. Now, I'd like to show you the context of this matter. The context is that Jesus is operating as a law enforcement agent, and he is enforcing the position of the justice system 
of heaven. And the utensil that he uses to enforce the position of the justice system of heaven is authority. The situation here is very judicial. First of all, Jesus comes upon the scene and during the time of his presentation, he was able to understand what was wrong with the woman without a diagnosis. In medical parlance, the situation that the woman was suffering from is, is curvature of the spinal cord. And there are supposed to be x-rays that would have been done in order to see how many the units of the spinal cord of, of the, the spine that were affected that led to the curvature of the spine. And they did not ask for a chiropractor. Those people that know how to make cracks on the backbone. Jesus discerned that the thing was not natural. His own diagnosis came through the gift of discernment of spirit and he was able to identify it as the spirit of infirmity. Are you still with me? Notice that the demon that was responsible for her curvature of the spine never went for lunch break for 18 years. To show you how hard working demons can be when they are assigned. <laughs> he had no desire. The demon had no desire for a quick leave, for ventilation. For 18 years, the demon was in active service. And when, when Jesus came, Jesus did the evaluation and factored that this one was a daughter of Abraham. It means that Satan does not have a right to bind her, but Satan had found a reason to bind her. That's why in the administration of priesthood, Satan has reasons for which several bondages find expression on several people, even believers. But if you are coming to plead your case, you must come with strong reasons. Satan has reasons, but you must have what? If you don't understand the template of, of justice, of judgment, of equity that is laid out in the framework of the new co covenant and the import of the currency of the, of the prayers and the prizes that Jesus paid, you will not have vocabulary, you will not have utterance to argue your case on the platform of the justice system that is in the spirit. I don't have time to digress to the book of Job to show you the ministry of the interpreter. Hallelujah. So Jesus looked at the whole thing and saw that Satan found a reason to bind her, even though Satan doesn't have a right to bind her. And in that scenario, he was functioning as one that was given equipment in the likeness of authority to prosecute the position of the law. This is an illegality. So Jesus steps up and he says, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. Do you realize that many people will be bound if we do not have men that have authority from God? Even though it is the statutory position of justice, judgment, and equity for the people to be liberated, if there is no law enforcement agent that is equipped with the utensil of authority, Satan will still have a day of rejoicing. And that's why you need to be challenged to step up in the ladder of your calling so that you too can become one of the functionaries that Jesus can trust with his authority for you to be a defender of the position of justice according to righteousness. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. Now, even though the lecture has not finished, we will stop here for now. So that we can pray in a moment. Are you still, are you still here? Please don't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. This is a critical matter. The law enforcement agent Darkness will continue. Gloominess will prevail. 
until someone equipped with statutory authority in the ways of the justice of heaven comes upon the scene. People that lost elections will rule and nothing will happen to them until men that have authority at that level they come upon the scene and say this is an illegality. The premise upon which your dynasty is established is not according to the laws of the land. And I come as someone that has been galvanized by God according to the will of the justice of the heavenlies. Hallelujah. That was why I loved, I, I, my man is Elijah. My man, that's my man. That's my man. As long as, I, as the Lord lived, oh, what he was doing, he was, he, was, he was a law enforcement agent before whom I stand. My position is not actually mine. My position is the Lord's. The thing is, I'm a waiter. I'm his waiter. I have something with him. And he has sent me on errand with delegated authority to, to establish his will. There are illegalities here. In fact, he gave me the token of fire to kill people that are propagating the illegalities in the land. You know if the spirit of judgment returns to the land and there's one among us that God chooses. It doesn't need to be me. Just one among us. That, that is willing to model the spirit of judgment effectively. The way Elijah did. People will begin to look for righteousness again. As the Lord liveth before whom I stand. And I believe, this is my own, don't believe with me. I'm believing alone on this matter. I believe that before my days are over on earth, What Elijah did that turned the fortunes of a nation around, I believe I will do. Amen. Now, what I'm saying is that I may not call down fire from heaven. That was his own unique expression of the authority profile that he had. But there was a, an anointing of the spirit of judgment that was upon him. It, everything was wrong in those days. Everything from the palace to the marketplace, everything was upside down. There, there was no divine order in place. The laws of God were abandoned, were forgotten. Traditions and darkness, a new priesthood had held the seat of power. And the number of priests that they had to serve his altars had grown in, in geometric progression. And then one man comes out of the king. With a man of authority, it doesn't matter how much mileage the kingdom of darkness has gained. Just one man. Oh, I, I see myself in Elijah. Just one man. He was not a gentleman. He was not too refined. His fashion concept was not consistent with present day reality. But there was something he had that the land could not ignore. It was authority manifesting as the spirit of judgment. I'm provoking you to pray because you like normal life. This type is normal human beings' life. <laughs> Some of us are, are reaching to the sky, the stars, impressing to God so that he can equip us to become such servants, not just normal kind of preachers, but such servants that have authority, capacity to change the status quo. To change the status quo. Can we pray? Can we pray? What are the laws that have been violated around you in your family? Servants now ride on horseback. And princes walk on foot. And there's no man of authority to come and say, this is an evil under the sun.
what, what illegality have you endured? Because you are lacking in authority to enforce the will of God. Tonight, we want to rebel against the devil. Oh, my sailor. Elijah the Tishbite. You know, I like his entrance. His introduction was brief. Not like, not like Nicodemus of the New Testament. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Ah, the introduction of Nicodemus was large, was bogus. But Elijah was brief. Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that was all. And when he showed up, he showed up with a decree. No matter how you calculate the seconds, number of seconds that, that were used to make that decree, it will not be more than 29 seconds. He locked the heavens with an utterance of 29 seconds. Because we, we recorded it. We, we said what he said and tried to record it. To know how many seconds. It's 29. As the Lord leave it. Before whom I stand, there shall not be rain. Neither dew, even locked up the pavilion, the, the opening for dew too was sealed up until by my word. That was a man that spoke like God. Indeed, indeed, he was God among men. That was what Moses was to Pharaoh. He was made a God unto Pharaoh. What that means is he had an authority. That was, that was bigger than the throne of Pharaoh. It is possible for you to have a mantle operational in your life that is bigger than the throne that is in this nation. The kings in the nation will need to come to you to plead with you. To plead. Okay, don't talk. Can you just... Is there a way you can manage not to talk? <laughs> See, authority, you cannot hide it in your pocket. Elijah came, he had no name, nobody knew him from the cave, from the wilderness. He closed the heavens for three and a half years, put the key in his pocket and walked away. It was the king that began to look for him. Is it not possible that a man comes and holds the flag of Nigeria? I said, Nigeria, you have bled. Now you will recover. And he walks away. He does it on Facebook and he walks away. And every manipulation that was attempted after that decree, it failed. One, two, three, four. Failed in Imo State. Failed in Abia State. Failed in, in Enugu. Ah, you see? One man spoke. The reason why you are seeing this pattern, it's not normal. It's one man. We don't know his name, but he spoke. He spoke with flag. <laughs> For how long will you endure illegalities? Jesus said, ought not this woman. The position of justice is that she ought to be free. But she was not free. Justice was crying out. She ought to be delivered. But she was not delivered because there was no law enforcement agent. Will you, will you, will you be an extension of the law? Of the laws of God? Will you be a functionary that will yield enough to become a law enforcement agent. I, I like that job. Can we tell the Lord we like that job? Send us. Send us to represent you. Mention our name in the courts of your glory and majesty. Grant unto us the mantle. The mantle by which the unbelieving world will be forced to record with the power of the kingdom of God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like Elijah. Let men say again. As the Lord live it. Before whom. I stand. Before whom I stand. Before whom I stand. Oh. Before whom I stand. Ought not this man who has been under this affliction for many years to be delivered? Ought not this woman who has not been able to conceive for so many years since she got married be delivered? 
so that she can hear the cry of a boy new life breaking forth oh god oh god i like this job make me your spokesman make me your spokeswoman such a man that you will bring upon the scene when justice has been perverted when equity has been denied when judgment has fallen men that will be carriers for the authority of heaven men upon whom you will invest your strength so we call upon you tonight hey so me get a bond on my height Romeseke kondeli makatebo Rakoska bandelaya Rakoske somanta baboko bositele Yale boria skita branda bakontemi Yale boria braskida Aiko me kabako de buse kabakundali Akode kentoria Abrisko fela bonda samina itete Randa babo sakabo Rabesko tela Rakante baboge bakudia Askedo bonde breske te baboko talia Abande keke Riko skabakondo Ma ais kombamina Kila branda baboke skala tala woman to be delivered ought not this family to be delivered put something upon our lives let your mighty hand rest let your mighty hand rest let it rest let it rest upon me to make a statement for God we will need the tools of the kingdom the utensils of the kingdom. We will need power. We will need authority. Father, Father, make us law enforcement agents. For us, the Lord leave it before whom I stand. to break free from the limitation that was placed upon the family because of the use of witchcraft and because of iniquity you will need authority in order for your face to shine in the midst of the darkness you will need authority to go beyond the lines of limitation that have been drawn from ages past as the Lord leave it before whom I stand hey kabosi menekeria reskotama kude babasuka bayata rande konseme eskoboroko se babala Randa Baba Siko Brema Di Alando Yekose Sedeke Yekose Nakandelia Rakademi Na Subredala Agai Kompolo Kora Sike Bante Babokotami